Hello everyone, and welcome to the kitchen. Um, doing something a little different in this video. Um, this past December, uh, we had a Secret Santa thing going on at work, uh, back when we were still working in the offices and not working from home. Um, anyways, my Secret Santa uh, surprised me by getting me this beer kit. Um, never crafted beer at home before. I've always bought beer at the store, uh, Budweiser, uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon, that sort of thing. Uh, but I never crafted beer myself. Uh, a friend of mine was doing it back in, uh, about 25 years ago, back in 95, uh, when we were in college. Um, but his, he had pretty much, uh, pretty complicated setup, if I remember right. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, finally getting around to uh, trying this out, to see if it works or not. I got the, pretty much everything set up here. I'm going to go through the brewing process in this video. Uh, the actual uh, eight or fermenting of the beer uh, that takes so of course over uh, it takes place over a course of a couple to three weeks, two to three weeks. So uh, basically, I'm going to do the brewing in this video, and then once uh, the beer is ready. Um, I'll show the progress of how it ferments and everything, and then we'll uh, do the bottling in the next video, preventing or providing it everything turns out okay. So, um, so anyways, with that, uh, let's go ahead and dig in, and we'll go through the brewing process and everything that's involved, uh, following the instructions that was on the that's printed up on the, on the printed instructions that came with the kit, as well as the DVD that came with the kit. So, uh, I've kind of combined the instructions from both. Uh, so hopefully this turns out alright, and um, see how it goes. So the first part of the assembly is assembling the keg. The keg has an uh, eight and a half quart mark on the back. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the eight and a half quarts though. So, but we're going to be making looks like a little over two gallons of uh, beer. Uh, first part of the assembly is to put the spigot onto the keg. And there's a washer here that's already on, so just taking that off, insert the spigot into the keg, and then tighten things down. And I've got the instructions up here on the fridge, so you see me looking off camera, that's what I'm looking at. So. Assembled. Uh, we fill the keg halfway with tap water and test for leaks. So, we'll go ahead and do that. Set that aside for now. And so I've already cleaned off the work area, so everything's good. So time to scrub hands and make sure my hands are clean before touching anything. Testing on TV these days. So. I don't see any leaks so far. Yep. 
that sort of thing. Yep. cleanser. So this cleanser that they have comes with all the kits and the refills. Uh, basically you mix it in with water and it uh, you don't have to worry about rinsing the chemicals out because the stuff that's in here apparently uh, assists with the Whole cleansing process. So it's half a pack of I'm supposed to mix in. So stir until dissolved and then screw on the lid. Wash the solution around in the keg. Make sure that's good. Okay, there's two vents up here, so there might be a little bit of leakage coming out. But into a large mixing bowl, the same size utensils for 10 minutes. So, Okay. 
here's our bowl of solution. And we put utensils into the measuring cup. And we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll turn and get the rest of them in the solution. In the meantime, uh, we'll go ahead and put a plate to rest the utensils on. Of course, we have to rinse this off with the solution too. Aside from now. Okay, so now that our utensils are clean, I'm going to rest these on the plate that we rinsed off. So we stay nice and clean and don't get recontaminated or anything. Although the measuring cup I will leave on the counter, but Here. And in case I need it, I'm going to set the bowl of cleaning solution back here. So now, uh, one thing I did while waiting for the utensils to get sanitized, um, I started heating up the water to heat up the uh, malt extract. Extract comes in a can, which I'll show you here in a moment. You need to put four cups of spring water into my big pot, my three quart pot here. So the water that I've got heating up, the malt extract, the reason for that is because it comes in a can, it's a, a hot malt extract, um, and it's kind of like, um, you can sort of take the top off the can and the inside is the packet of yeast, which is uh, important for the fermenting of the beer, we'll get to that after a bit. But because all the malt is basically down at the bottom, put that in hot water and let that heat up. And turn the heat off for that so it doesn't get too hot. Meanwhile, the four uh, cups I put in the big pot, we need to heat that up to boiling. thing about cooking with gas, things heat up pretty quickly. So, I 
And as I was saying about the heating up the, of the malt extract, that it'll basically make it easier to flow out of the can when you take it out of the can. And it's kind of like uh, uh, if you ever watched uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, there's an episode where he visited the Crayola Crayon Factory. And they showed at the begin very beginning a tank car of wax where they heated up the tank car. Uh, basically, there's two shells to the tank car, inner and outer, and in between this is the coils that heat up the tank car. And that basically heats up the product so it flows easily out of the tank. And uh, that's basically the same principle here. It basically heats it up so it flows easily out of the can. Of course, those of you who know me long enough and know that I'm in the trains should have known that I'd get something railroading into that. So, um, anyways. this to heat up to the oil. This shouldn't take long. It's... Meanwhile, while that is going, we need to fill the keg to the four quart mark with cold spring water, which we'll go ahead and do. It's off. You tell Casey. Reason for cold water in here is because this keg is plastic. Uh, obviously, you don't want to put oil and hot water into a plastic keg like this. It'll melt the plastic easily or distort it and cause problems for you. So, um, the instructions did say, at least in the DVD, they said to use, you could use tap water, but I'm going to go ahead and use spring water. Um, they did say not to use bottled water or distilled water because distilled water doesn't have the minerals in it the spring water does. So. Kit came, it didn't come with the packet, at least. This is the liquid malt extract, which um, came with the refill. I actually got a refill because the malt extract that came with the kit had data of uh, 2015, which is uh, a bit old for brewing. So. See water swirling, it's getting ready to boil. And it's got a little steam coming off of it. Basically, you heat it up to boil. And you remove the heat. And we'll go ahead and use the packet of the liquid malt extract as well. Just try it out. And water does start boiling as you watch it, so. Go ahead and 
underneath this, my hot water. Underneath the heat off of that. And we have to open this. Just the lid goes down into malt extract. Yeah. Yeah, it's the whisk to stir this in with. as much out of here as you can. That's why I got a spatula cleaned off here. There we go. This is the stuff that turns the water into the alcohol and beer. Stirring good. Then we'll go ahead and do the liquid pouch here. Can up there side. This is going to turn into something as delicious as a good bottle of beer or a can of beer if you drink it from the can. But I'm trying to get as much of this out as I can. I think you're supposed to heat this up as well. I'm getting most of it out of the pouch, so that's good. There's another glove there.
So since this is all mixed, we add this into the keg. Second ceramic will mix, so. Now, uh, eight and a qu half quart mark. Sorry. Where is eight and a half? Right there, eight and a half. right at eight and a half quarts. So now we need to thoroughly stir this up to make sure the mixture that we put in is mixed in nice and thoroughly with the spring water that's already in here. It's almost like really dark like tea or something, like my mom used to make. Well, I'm pretty sure it doesn't taste anything like my mom's tea, but... Alright, so now that that's all mixed in... Do the yeast, which... There's the tab to pull. Kitchen shears that only come with, I only use on the food. Sprinkle the yeast on top. You do not stir it in. Just let it spread out. Now this is going to cook and make the alcohol. Alright, so we're set. And of course. Stir on the lid, nice and tight. Alright. So 
part as part of the brewing process. Uh, this has to sit. Um, you want to keep it out of direct sunlight, and I believe it's uh, 68 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit is what you want to keep it at. Uh, don't have any place really here in my kitchen to keep it out of the light and everything. So what I'm going to do um, is basically keep it in my cooler, and we're going to keep this. Uh, In the basement way where I think it'll be nice and dark and the constant temperature for it and I'll let that ferment then. So there you have it. Uh, that is the brewing part of the uh, Mr. Beer beer kit. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm going to be keeping an eye on it the next two to three weeks um, to see how it's coming along. Um, once it's done, basically um, you wait until um, basically check it and wait until it's um, the liquid mix becomes. Basically clear, it's not cloudy or anything like that. Uh, once it's clear, uh, you test it. Um, if it tastes like flat beer, then it's ready to bottle. If it's sweet or have, has a different taste to it, then uh, it's not ready to bottle. But um, so, anyways, I'm gonna keep checking it, and uh, a couple weeks we'll, if it's uh, clear and ready to go, we'll taste it and. Uh, I'll show the results and then we'll get do the bottling process in the next video. So anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Tune in for the next one. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, and feel free to comment below. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments as well below as well. And with that, happy brewing.